we will continue with the um, methane example so uh, <clears throat> the equation uh, for combustion of uh, methane in oxygen can be written as uh, such uh, ch4 plus 2 times o2 plus 79 over 21 n2 now that uh, uh, 79 over 21 comes with the um, mole fraction of uh, nitrogen in air so this is this is air basically so this this one is air and that nitrogen doesn't burn therefore uh, 2 times 79 over 21 n2 will remain um, in the products and the rest of the products are the same co2 plus 2 h2 so uh, <clears throat> to do um to look at the to you to uh, convert this uh, equation these equations into uh, mass fractions um mass ratio to calculate the mass air fuel ratio you need to um, get the mass ratios between the two so air fuel uh, ratio means mass of air uh, to mass of fuel basically so uh, to do that you need to know the um, atomic numbers uh, the atomic numbers will give you the uh, weight uh, of uh, the molecules uh, the substance so we will um, uh, for that you need um, to look at the um, periodic tables so for example um, this is the periodic table so you have hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon so th these uh, <coughs> 20 plus the rest um, so um, hydrogen is one it helium is two lithium is uh, uh, three uh, beryllium is uh, four, four boron is five uh, so on so that that means uh, this is the one one ki one kilo kilomole is uh, one kilogram one kilomole is two kilogram uh, and so on so in the periodic table uh, if you look at look closely um, in in here so if you if you look at one uh, substance you will see that for example uh, uh, that 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 uh, cage tells you the uh, tells you uh, c c is the name uh, or, or the given uh, symbol so that is the atomic number C, uh, 6 uh, is the, uh, then carbon is the name and atomic mass is grams per mole is 12 times uh, 12.001 sorry 12.011 for carbon so uh, if you go for something else for example um, sodium atomic number is 11 um, symbol is na name is sodium and uh, the um, atomic mass is 22.99 zero grams per mole so we'll uh, for for uh, the oops we will try to uh, calculate the uh, mass to air fuel ratio for methane combustion so uh, if I were to do this, uh, we'll see how, how I would do it, okay? So what is the air fuel ratio uh, here? Uh, mass air fuel ratio, okay? There are two air fuel ratios, mass air fuel ratio and the volumetric air fuel ratio. So we are worried normally about the mass air fuel ratio. So then uh, we, we need to need to convert the, con now the equation is given in moles, so you need to convert it into mass, okay? So uh, then what you do is substitute uh, the ma masses. So th this will be 44, uh, we did it earlier, this will be 44, this will be 32, and so on. So <clears throat> fuel to air ratio is CH4 to O2 is O2, 79 over 21, uh, N2. So that, that, that would be um, uh, the mass. So, so you need to substitute the masses of these ones uh, together. So CH4 is 40, sorry, CH4 is 44, O2 is 32, N2 is 28. So if you multiply with those numbers, you will you will get the answer. So for um, CH4 to air is 16.274. Okay. So I, I'm sure you will understand how you how this how you get the numbers here. It's pretty self-explanatory as well as uh, pretty clear. Okay. And um, yeah, uh, next uh, 
um, post the video and uh, write a balanced equation for stoichiometric combustion of propane and determine the air fuel ratio for stoichiometric uh, combustion of propane. So, um, the, the, I'm not going to stop the video, but when you when you listen to this, just stop it, do it, and then um, start it again. Okay. So, if you write the um, balanced uh, equation for C3H8, uh, so you have three carbon carbon atoms, uh, so uh, eight uh, hydrogen atoms, uh, and so on. So, um, if you look, uh, and, and then uh, for air, O2 plus 79.0 over 221 N2 times x, x is the number of um, air uh, moles um, and uh, it will produce uh, YCO2 plus ZH2O plus x um, times 79 over 21 uh, N2. So you don't have to calculate x again because this x, once you have calculated x, that x will remain the same, right? So your answer should be carbon-3, um, hydrogen-8 uh, uh, and uh, if you write equations, uh, so uh, on the left hand side, uh, reactants, carbon, you have three carbons, uh, hydrogen eight, so oxygen two times x, uh, and then if you can balance oxygen, carbon, uh, if you can balance carbon, y will be, um, y will be three, uh, two, is it, uh, two, two uh, is it, uh, will be eight, yeah, and so on. So you will get the numbers, is it four, um, x is equal to uh, two, 2 times x is equal to 10 so x equals 5 um, and your equation should be should be um, c3h8 plus 5 o2 uh, o plus 79 over 21 n2 is equal to 3 co2 and 4 h2o and 5 times and uh, 79 over 21 n2 so that will be your um, that that will be your balanced equation so once you have calculated the balanced equation you can go uh, you can do the air fuel ratio like earlier, so your air fuel ratio will be um, 44 uh, to 0.686 or 687. Okay, so um, <clears throat> once you have calculated this, so these are the answers that you will that you will get. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, 44, 44 to 686.66. Uh, so your answer should be. One to fifteen points. Then, uh, then we will look at uh, stoichiometry. Uh, what is a stoichiometry? Uh, so, if you get uh, fuel composition, uh, <coughs> octane uh, will have an air fuel ratio of uh, about four, uh, fifteen. Gasoline has a uh, air fuel ratio of fourteen point seven. Uh, uh, dirty cane uh, is about 14.9 and diesel is 14.5 so um, <coughs> so what causes this difference uh, the, so this difference is caused by uh, change in fuel composition okay so gasoline uh, is uh, the components of gasoline are 100 percent gasoline okay toluene is a uh, So the, this this have um, this this is uh, the change in composition chart. So uh, stoichiometric. So so uh, we we will see what the exact uh, stoichiometric ratio is. In um, so in practice, a uh, mixture of fuel is uh, could be uh, too lean or too rich. Yeah, too lean means uh, you you don't have enough. Uh, you will have uh, too much. Uh, you don't have enough fuel in the sense you will have too. Um, much oxygen and uh, oxygen o oxidant that's there. Uh, too rich means you don't have enough uh, uh, oxygen to uh, do full uh, complete combustion. So, uh, too lean mixture is okay because you get always get complete combustion. Uh, but too rich mixture you don't get complete combustion. Okay. And then uh, you have uh, <clears throat> you you define something called. Uh, um, equivalence ratio I measured the air fuel to air equivalence ratio uh, phi uh, phi is uh, is the fraction of uh, actual mass to air ratio mass to air fuel ratio versus uh, or, or divided by 
um, stoichiometric ma mass field um, mass field to air ratio okay so and 1 over 5 equivalent ratio 1 over 5 is the equivalent ratio 1 over 5 is lambda so it is that is the excess uh, air ratio so lambda is um, this is sometimes you say air, uh, air fuel equivalence ratio but uh, it is actually excess air ratio okay so lambda that means lambda if lambda is one, greater than one uh, it is uh, you always have a lean mixture uh, so if lambda is greater than uh, less than uh, one you will have a excess mixture So lambda greater than one is a full lean lean. Uh, so stoichiometric lambda one a fuel rich is lambda less than one. Okay. So uh, then you you always need, you also need to look at uh, flammability limits. A uh, mixture of uh, fuel and oxygen is only combustible if the ratios are within a particular range, and this is known as the flammability range. So uh, so you you need to have that in the flammability range. So too lean and too rich will not uh, burn either. So, <clears throat> so there's a, a lower fl flammability limit and upper flammability limit. That means uh, uh, you have, uh, so, so th these are uh, the uh, lower and upper flammability limits. So, um, hydrogen is really, really flammable. Uh, carbon monoxide is really, really fl flammable, but petrol is not that, uh, so if you have, too much uh, oxygen it won't uh, it, it won't uh, catch fire okay so, oh um, and propane also and methane or uh, methane also they have small flammability limits okay then we'll look at emissions so combustion and the, for that you need to look at combustion chemistry so for example if you uh, if uh, if you look at um, c2h6 so C2H6, uh, so combustion, uh, it, it will break down into C2H2 uh, and uh, then um, it can break down into C2H2, H4, C2H3, C2H2, C2H2 and so on. So it will, uh, so that that again uh, breaks down into uh, C2H2, that breaks into CH2 and then that uh, mixes with oxygen and um, makes CO, CO, then CO with oxygen. Or oh, CO uh, and OH, CO2 and uh, H2O, uh, and so on. Okay, so these are uh, these are uh, some intermittent um, components. Now CH4 will not just burn as CH4, so it will burn as various components. Um, okay, so <clears throat> so you don't re you rarely get perfect combustion. You don't really get perfect combustion all the time. So um, you can have uh, in in the exhaust or the products you will have carbon monoxide unburnt hydrocarbons particulate matter and nitrogen nitrogen oxides or oxides of nitrogen um, in addition to co2 and uh, h2o okay so uh, we'll uh, look at how uh, uh, emission for emissions form and health uh, the, what are what the health effects are so carbon monoxide uh, is the formed due to incomplete combustion um, so uh, <laughs> if you look at uh, so carbon monoxide is a colorless and an odorless uh, gas uh, it is toxic to human uh, <clears throat> so this is per year actually maybe uh, 25 people in England and Wales are killed by CO2 pollution CO has killed it has killed many campers so who could extinguish barbecue in porch okay so uh, don't do that you go camp it's uh, unburnt hydrocarbons 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 are formed when uh, fuel isn't properly burnt so th there are a number of ways it, in which it, it can happen so uh, <clears throat> so f fuel ca fuel may not go into the combustion zone or uh, you can have a weak uh, flame front where, where you do, where it doesn't get to the get to the uh, real uh, required combustion temperature so those are two things um, so <clears throat> unburnt hydrocarbons can form a ground level and ozone, which is harmful uh, to uh, health. Uh, they can uh, uh, it can cause uh, petrochemical smog as well. 
So um, they they are not particulate matter; they are just sunburnt hydrocarbons. Okay, so they don't uh, mix up the two. So particulate matter uh, is formed due to incomplete combustion again, but uh, that is because uh, if you look at uh, com combustion, sometimes uh, if you Right uh, now, now this is for this is for CH four. So for so for CH four, you you won't get uh, carbon uh, the CH four breaking into carbon fully. Okay, but uh, if you get diesel, uh, you will look you will see that uh, it will uh, it will break into carbon and hydrogen uh, and CH carbon and uh, hydrocarbons, and then that, that carbon uh, can. <clears throat> go out of the exhaust as uh, particulate matter. <clears throat> so the exact uh, formation uh, mechanisms are not fully understood, but they are at uh, PM10 and PM2.5 uh, particulate matter. So uh, these are the filter sizes basically. So um, if you have a <clears throat> 10 micron filter, and uh, if uh, so, uh, 10 microns is if the particulate matter is uh, less, uh, smaller than 10 microns, uh, so that is PM10 particulate matter. So then you can have a 2.5 micron uh, particulate filter. So uh, so that filters uh, PM10s as well. And uh, so if you, so PM2.5 is a particulate matter that is uh, smaller than um, uh, 2.5 microns uh, by size. So these are small, uh, small particulates can penetrate uh, the lungs. Um, now, um, um, very small particulate matter actually um, can, if at at high speed, at high speed can even penetrate the skin. So, uh, yeah. so small particulate matter can penetrate lungs and uh, they can cause uh, uh, asthma and uh, lung cancer. Okay. Um, so, particulate matter is a um, link to equivalence ratio basically. Uh, so. <laughs> so when when the mass uh, get, gets leaner, the mass decreases. The number of uh, the the number increases. Uh, so so uh, by definition, the droplet size has uh, increased as well. So uh, if when you have a, a fuel layer uh, equivalence ratio in this uh, in the x axis in the y axis, you have a number of concentration. Uh, of particulate matter. So mass concentration increases, the uh, number of concentration decreases. Uh, so th therefore, uh, what, what, it, what it will tell you is uh, the, the leaner mixtures will give you less carbon, less, um, less CO or, and less CO2, but more, uh, more ultrafine uh, ca carbon, pa ultrafine particle, particulates, okay. And then uh, noxus can form uh, at high temperature. N2 will burn in oxygen at high temperature. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so noxus are a nitrogen oxide that are formed by nitrogen carrying uh, fuels. So basically, um, <coughs> if you have uh, uh, nitrogen in the fuel, uh, also uh, there, there can be um, uh, oxides formed, uh, and these uh, noxes can be in NO2, NO3, etc. Okay. So nitrogen, nitrogen in uh, air can uh, react uh, with radicals of C and CH and CH2 also. Uh, now uh, noxes uh, can. Uh, Harm the lungs, uh, and uh, it uh, it can also it also uh, contributes in acid, acid rain. So, so um, the acid that so if you uh, emit sulfur to the atmosphere, you can have sulfuric acid uh, pouring. You can if you um, emit uh, noxus to the noxus and soxus. We call it them soxus or the oxides of uh, sulfur. Uh, noxus uh, will uh, will form nit nitric acid. And then uh, we'll look at emissions and uh, uh, the, the graph. So, so, so 
<clears throat> this is the uh, the y axis will uh, tell you the comparative uh, percentage volume in exhaust and uh, x axis is the uh, equivalence ratio and uh, so this is the um, this one equivalence ratio one is 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 that dotted line and this way uh, the air fuel ratio is uh, rich this is this way the air fuel ratio is lean so noxus uh, form at maximum noxus will be formed just after just after the uh, after lambda equals one so slightly lean uh, conditions uh, but at that point uh, hydrocarbons are at a minimum co are at a minimum uh, well not at a minimum uh, they are pretty low when you go further and further co co will go, go further down uh, but hydrocarbons could could go up a little bit okay so um <clears throat> EU um, has uh, mandatory uh, emission targets. Uh, so uh, from uh, 2015, the average fleet CO2 emissions must be less than uh, uh, 130 grams per kilometer, and uh, that it's been it, it will be decreased to 95 grams per kilometer in 2021. Uh, <coughs> so. Um, Per gram uh, per kilometer, uh, a 95 uh, euro levy uh, will be um, will be uh, there uh, for the uh, gram gram of carbon uh, released to the atmosphere. So. Uh, these are uh, these uh, various uh, emission standards uh, for so uh, they are in uh, euro standards and, uh, and acceptable limits so you could uh, always uh, refer to the Volkswagen uh, scandal uh, on emissions uh, as well um, so these are euro standard now nowadays you have a uh, um, vehicles coming with euro 6 uh, standards so uh, in the, in 2000 um, between 2000 and 2010 maybe um, the euro standards were about uh, euro 4 um, and then it went to euro 5 but uh, uh, and uh, then euro uh, 6 now so in 2014 we have euro uh, 6 so in, in 1992 euro 1 96 euro 2 2000 euro 3 2005 euro 4 2009 euro 5 and uh, 5A, 2009 Euro 5, 5B, and now Euro 6, 2014. So if you look at cars uh, that were manufactured after the, after 2014, most of them uh, they will they they would uh, adhere to Euro 6. Not uh, not everyone though, but uh, cars after, released after like 2016, they most of them com uh, comply to Euro 6. So um. Uh, in, Reaching Euro 6, uh, the difficulty in reaching Euro 6 uh, are the NOx standards, uh, NOx emissions uh, uh, with by uh, diesel cars. So um, we, we will look at how, how they are measured. Um, so there, there is a place called the European Joint Research Center. Uh, so they, they had the particulate uh, measurement program. So uh, the Euro 6, current Euro 6 standards are a result of those. Uh, of that program uh, so <clears throat> so um to to um uh, reduce the um, emissions you have what you call as the catalytic converters so there are two-way catalytic converters so the two-way catalytic converters uh, uh, control co and unburnt hydrocarbons and there are three-way catalytic converters the three-way catalytic converters uh, control co hydrocarbons and noxus also so if you have a three-way catalytic converter in your car normally you will have to use uh, what the substance called adblue adblue is actually um, it's a it's a trade name uh, um, uh, adblue is uh, is a urea mixture, uh, urea solution basically. So, um, so the three-way catalytic converter do, uh, does three uh, uh, simultaneous tasks. So it will um, 
when you have noxus it will uh, burn noxus with uh, and uh, it it will disintegrate noxus into o2 and uh, n2 and then uh, it, sorry it doesn't burn it does it just disintegrates in noxus to uh, o2 and n2 and then if you have co um, it will it will burn co basically and and with with o2 and it will produce uh, co2 so there will be some heat released in in this process so that is why the catalytic converters get uh, heated up that is why they got get hot uh, then uh, if you have un unburned hydrocarbons again uh, they they will they will burn with oxygen and uh, they, they will release co2 and h2o again that means uh, produced heat so this is after com uh, combustion after the combustion chamber so no use for heat generation no no use for propulsion but uh, these are done for uh, just for um, just for emission re reasons So uh, three-way catalytic converters, they all they, they operate in narrow band of uh, equivalence ratios. Uh, so <laughs> we'll uh, look at uh, so they are they are three-way catalytic converters though are, are unsuitable for uh, diesel engines. So the cat cat can't uh, uh, do do it. Just the cat can't do it. So that that's why um, I, as as I mentioned, you you need to have urea solutions for diesel engines. Uh, so um, so you, you do it in two stages. So CO and H H H H C are treated uh, before uh, the uh, diesel oxidant oxidant catalyst. Okay, so. Uh, or, or selective selective reduction catalyst. So so what you do is you you do um, you you uh, so in this process in a diesel car in in this process you do these sorry these two first and then uh, do that one uh, uh, next. So uh, so we'll see how it will be done. Uh, this diagram this diagram will will show it to you better. So the SCR selective uh, <coughs> catalytic reductions. Uh, uses aqueous uh, urea to uh, urea solution uh, to reduce noxious to nitrogen uh, water and carbon dioxide so um, so and, and you will have a diesel particulate filter also in, in as the um, emission control so so you, that is your um, engine so you, it will have particulate matter co hc and noxious then oxidate you have an oxidation catalyst so once you have an oxidation catalyst that will that will convert co and hc to co2 and h2o but it doesn't do anything with the particulate matters or matter or noxus then you have the diesel particulate filter then that diesel particulate filter will remove particulate matters or the trapped particulate matters so uh, <coughs> you are left with co2 h2 and noxus then you will have you will do the urea dosing so the, or, or, and uh, selective catalytic reduction uh, with that you will get rid of uh, noxus so that will that will create that will uh, disintegrate noxus into n2 um, and uh, o2 okay. and uh, if you if you had uh, uh, nox uh, no uh, so <clears throat> uh, in, in in fact in this uh, SCRs, so the reaction is 4NO plus 2NH2CO. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, this is urea. So that will uh, take the nitrogen out, and it will it will create uh, H2O and CO2. Therefore, there will be no release of oxygen actually. So these are the so that's all what you what you uh, what we talk about today. Um, so <clears throat> quickly um, learn what we uh, did uh, about the catalytic converter. So so um, uh, the two types are um, three-way catalytic converter. It does it it uh, does remove uh, noxus, but it removes noxus by uh, Converting noxus into oxygen and N2. So this the band because the bandwidth of this one is uh, narrow, you can't use them in in um, diesel engines. So this is good for petrol engines. Okay. So, but uh, for petrol engines, 
Uh, for diesel engines, you, you need to normally use uh, what you call uh, SCR, the selective catalytic reduction process. So that is what you have, what you have in a diesel engine. Okay, so be clear about that. So um, we um, today we looked at uh, the describe the necessary conditions for combustion. Uh, we uh, we used Galen's chemical equations for combustion process and ca they calculated the stoichiometric capital ratio and they try to understand the formation and health risk of pollutants and uh, we'll look at the uh, exhaust gas after treatment also exhaust gas after treatment is what you do in the back pipe of the engine okay? so all the, all the filtering all the catalytic, catalytic conversion etc hope you um, enjoy the lecture hope you understood it um, so i'll see you um, Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday face-to-face -face and Thursday on online. Thank you.